来到了哈利法克斯，呃，博物馆和历史遗迹是不能不看的。哈利法克斯作为加拿大的历史名城，博物馆和历史遗迹是非常多的。这里，如果你要是每一个历史遗迹和博物馆都看的话，至少要花上几天的时间。现在我来到了这个的历史遗迹呢，是。大家非常熟悉的一个位于哈利法克斯市中心的一个军事城堡。这个历史城堡呢，和安大略省的 Kingston 军事城堡有些相似。那就进入了这个城堡，这个就是。位于哈利法克斯非常重要的一个城堡，它是建在哈利法克斯的一个市中心的一个高地上，前面就是港湾，它的下面就是哈利法克斯的城中心，这里就是这个军事要塞的一个最高点。在这里可以俯视哈利法克斯的市中心，以及哈利法克斯的港湾。进出的船只在这里可以说一览无余。在过去呢，进出的船只都在这个军事要塞的监视之下。站在这里，哈利法克斯的市中心一览无余。现在这里面有几个展览，也可以看一看。Oh, hey, it's open. Yes, come in. Oh. <laughs> um, it's also guiding here. If you need anything, just let us know. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because here, 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 在十八世纪、十九世纪，火枪的刺刀就已经是三郎了。在这个展览馆介绍是从一七五零年一直到一九四五年，主要就是英国与法国的战争，以及英国与。美国的独立战争的一个历史。
because the majority of the soldiers standing sentry would have either been harshly or even completely illiterate. So having a uh, piece of paper with the orders written down wouldn't be very effective. So to guarantee the sentries knew what they needed to be doing, they had the verbally stated, excuse me folks, you will be able to head out just another minute or so. Thank you. The three orders they need to know while they're out there nowadays is to take charge of all government property within the range of this post. So just meeting even historically, Looking around Halifax, most of it was government property, so if they noticed anything bad happening, like fires, riots, or anything like that... Right, all my glasses, too. Yes. Uh, they'd report it back to who was in charge of the guard detachment at the time. Next one is that all persons of respectable appearance may be admitted without a pass by recording their name in the visitor book. So even back then, as long as you were dressed respectively... He's not bugging me. Uh, but you were allowed to come into the fort as long as you got you wrote your name in the visitor book. And finally, to pay compliments to all officers of the army and navy according to their rank, just salute people that need to be saluted. They spot in a specific way so that as they're switching, there's always someone looking out towards the harbor, and there's never a back turn. With that, once again, the corporal put himself on the right side of now the old sentry to march him back so that he can begin his two-hour break. Kind of the opposite of what we saw. You're going to put down the rifles, and the old sentry is going to unfix his bayonet since it's no longer needed on his brain. the doorway quickly because corporal guards will defend it first. So the time period is 1869 to 71 and the reason why we say this sort of range of years is because the uniforms that we're wearing and the, the regiments that we're representing were only here between those years. Those two regiments were the 78th Highlanders and the 3rd Brigade of the Royal Artillery onto its fourth version. So the first version of the Citadel was put up in 1749 when the city was founded. They, uh, they come here, they see this huge hill, and they decide it's the best place to put a defense. So they put up what's called a blockhouse. It's a large sort of cylinder building made of wood. It sits in the same spot as this building, so they call it the first Citadel. Now this didn't have a wall around it, it didn't have really a perimeter of any sorts, it was just the building. The second citadel, uh, it's kind of the same thing except for they now uh, sort of defend the perimeter a bit more, they add ditches and trenches around the whole sort of outer area, so the hill itself is kind of like the whole fort, uh, but it still really doesn't have like a wall or any sort of uh, defensive measures besides you know the single building. But the third citadel is when it really kind of starts to look like a fort, more or less. So they they get rid of the cylinder building in the middle, the the, uh, the blockhouse, and they replace it with this building here, Cavalier Building. Uh, bring that over to the other side, and then slowly climb your way out as well. Uh, and all the while, while that's happening, you have a lot of spots where the enemy can, or, or so the defending force, I guess you could say, uh, can shoot at you. So behind me here, this is the musketry gallery. Uh, you know, it's a name like that. I'm sure you can put together that it's a shooting gallery. So it's to shoot down into here. This, if I did that, when my ship was spotted coming in, flying my sort of logo flag, they could pull my flag out of their signal post, put it up on the mast, uh, along with what's called a pennant. So up there, you see that long triangular flag. That'll tell you basically how big it is. Uh, or sort of like what class of ship it is. Uh, the square flag tells you who owns it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> keep the tradition alive and make some noise and, and smoke. But uh, 
for, you know, back when it was actually being used in the 1800s, it did have a practical use. For the 12 o'clock shot, which is what we fire off now, this was <clears throat> to tell people what time it was in the city. So, you know, it's very inconvenient, even if you have a watch or a clock or something, uh, to have to take out your house clock and bring it down to the house, uh, you know, the town clock and set it, bring it all the way back up. And for some people, especially in this time period, clocks were, uh, you know, commonly very large. And so uh, bringing them down anywhere was, you know, not really possible for a lot of people. They made sure there was nothing inside of it. They make sure there's no rocks or anything people stuck in there or, you know, whatnot. Uh, they also do that because it was technically part of the drill historically to make sure there's, uh, especially if they're repeat firing, shooting it off twice. Uh, they want to make sure there's nothing left in there burning when they fire it off again, when they go to put a new charge in there that's going to blow up. You don't want any flame inside. So they search it out, they make sure there's nothing in there. And now that that's done, uh, they also loaded it as well. They put the pound of black powder in there that we're going to use to fire off. Now it's just one pound of black powder, no cannonball. No, uh, no cannonball, no objects being fired out, of course just noise and smoke hey. 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 Fire. Oh. 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 但是却是了解哈利法克斯这座城市的历史以及诺瓦斯科沙历史一个最好的一个地方这是因为在这里有一个展厅来介绍这个诺瓦斯科沙的历史的时间脉络再有三百年时间的这种军事城堡之前的历史以及一直到二次大战结束之间的历史呢在这里都有记载由于诺瓦斯科沙是位于大西洋上过去在英法的竞争中呢过去在领土的扩张中呢海洋是必争的一个地方海洋的沿岸以及重要的河流沿岸都建有这种军事的城堡在这座城堡里还有一个武器的展示可以了解从武器的诞生一直到二十世纪初的武器的一个演变的过程在参观完这个军事要塞的城堡
，不过今天不开了，不让人们参观。这个就是炮台及士兵过去所在的遗址，守护着这个哈利法克斯这个港湾。这就是过去的一个炮台。这个公园对公众是免费开放的。到了这里，可以了解哈利法克斯作为军事要塞的地位的重要性是什么样子的。这期的视频就到这里了，下次见。